Uh, so you mentioned Ricky Flex that Quantum Mania might have been one of the best trailers of 2022. I'll tell you what, I think we already have a contender for best trailer of 2023 with Ari Aster's Bo is Afraid. Uh, starring Joaquin Phoenix, A24 film. The film releases April 21st in theaters. What were your th initial reactions to Ari Aster's third film following Hereditary and Midsommar? Here comes Bo is Afraid. What are your thoughts? I, I was thinking maybe the synopsis we were given is wrong <laughs> right after seeing this trailer. It, this, this trailer was all over the place in a way that I liked. It got wild. It got crazy. It was like similar to an Ari Aster film, but, even, but on a bigger scale. And I was really intrigued by it. But again, the synopsis from this movie, just from the trailer, I would guess would be a normal person is that is you know trying to see his mother and is afraid to see basically afraid to see his mother and like attack the world basically but the synopsis we get we've gotten is a decade spanning portrait of one of the most successful entrepreneurs of all time this man looks like he's poor it looks like he is in a crappy apartment building and like i i just don't see how the most successful entrepreneur would be like this but hey like this is the ari aster spit on it now like I said, everything's crazy. Why is everyone going crazy in the streets? Why is everyone running into people on the streets? We got Goodbye Stranger playing, which is awesome. I love that. It set the tone, I Great. think, as well, very well. The break through the glass door was my favorite part of the trailer. Joaquin running through the door. I laughed out loud the two times I saw this. But yeah, I, I am a little confused just based off the synopsis we were given and then the trailer that we got. But I did really like it. Seems a little uh, pandemic influenced by like a recluse who you, you talked about, like how it's this very successful um, individual and like can't leave his house, can't go on a plane, right? It seems like he is literally afraid, right? Bo is afraid. Um, I thought the casting of the kid is pretty spot on, you know, to be honest, when it comes to like what Joaquin Phoenix traditionally looks like. And uh, he seems like he's a tick off, Joaquin Phoenix, a tick off. You know, uh, I do also want to say what type of drugs is Ari Aster taking? He, those visuals were wild. Mm. When it, we, we get a little bit more of an, 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 an uh, adventure story from Ari Aster here. You can uh, you obviously argue Midsummer was as well, but it obviously has a leniency towards horror. My takeaway from this trailer is that it's still going to have a lot of those horror elements, but this is like, Ari Aster really going for it compared to his first two films. I think this one, it has a little bit of hopefulness to it, and it has a journey that we want our character to end positively on. And it's, uh, I don't, it just did not have the strictly horror vibes of a hereditary or like a unique horror story like Midsommar, like in the daylight and all these scary things happening. Here it's like, just this man recluse that has horror elements, but he's going on an inspirational journey. Like it didn't feel like Ari Aster's previous films. And I, I think that's good. It's not being, um, I guess uh, he does. He's not boxing himself in with this movie. He's rather just exploring and he's just taking where like his next story goes. And if it has horror elements, good, but also he just wants to be – he's a gifted visual storyteller. Let him do his thing. But uh, I like the intrigue and the mystery surrounding all of this. And if you want to just go by visuals and watch this on mute, I think you really could have, you know? Yeah, I. it's interesting because like I also had the reaction of this is Ari Aster going for his first two movies, horror movies, not going to get recognized by the Academy or these all these award shows really for the most part. But critically – like successful and huge audience favorites. So this one looks bigger on the scale, like I mentioned before, but also like you have some of the horror elements that that's like his sweet spot. It seems like that's his sweet spot, but that's not what this is. This seems like he's going for it from a critical point of view with more of the critics that I talked about at the top end of the show, more of those like Academy voters and th people like that. And it seems like this is an A24 movie and you were t just talking about like this and we were just saying how this is like him going for it. This seems like this is his control and A24 really granted him control. And it's just interesting because he's only had two movies, like two movies 
And it seems like we're already at that. He's already at that status where like we trust him. And I think over the past couple years, we've seen a lot of filmmakers, like writers and director combinations that a lot of these studios have just given money to, particularly streamers, Netflix, and it hasn't really panned out. So I trust day 24. We just raved about the year they had in 2022, 2023. They have a huge year coming up as well. And this is one of the headliners. I think it won't be like the theme that I was just talking about, but I, I did have that uh, reaction in my mind that this looks like when we saw everything everywhere all at once in theaters, like that trailer in theaters, we were like, that looks just all over the place. I don't know if that's going to be good, but the age 24 banner and, and lead performance, Michelle Yeoh to back it really like care, like was amazing. And the Daniels did a great job. I feel like this is going to be the same thing with Joaquin and Ari Aster. Yeah, no, I agree. Ari Aster, 36 years old. It kind of has a Robert Eggers type of vibe to or him. Or Chazelle. Or Chazelle, but like more of Eggers because of the dark elements, horror elements that are in his movies. So like Chazelle, he can have darker elements, but like it's David I was Chazelle. more it's the creative freedom and he's young. Up and yeah, no, no, no I, I hear you. I was just trying to make more of a direct and with uh, literally with the relationship with A24. Um, I'm excited. Like this movie literally, I think – it, it was a spectacle to look at the trailer and I can't wait to see, like go to these different landscapes and the, like me, I, I really hope it's not in a situation where he's hallucinating in his bed. Like, I don't want that ending to the movie. I don't think it's going to happen because that's a terrible movie trope. And I don't think Ari Aster, he's too creative for that. But uh, I'm talking about supporting cast a little bit here. Like Amy Ryan as the villain, we're talking about Holly Flax from, the office what like it to me it's like perfect for like a unexpected horror type of villain and it just continues like this um amazing i guess uh success for the office cast since the office ended you know like they've been really killing it like obviously steve carell left early did his thing john krasinski has so gone on to be such a a force as a director in with a quiet place and uh you know, he played a variant of Reed Richards in Fantastic Four. He's gone and do some incredible things. BJ Novak, like directing his first movie. You know, it's just like these, these it just shows me how supremely talented the office was, like the cast itself, and why that show works so well. It's just too many people that were so talented working at the same time. Um, and then also Nathan Lane. I like Nathan Lane. I like I haven't seen him much. I like I remember growing up watching Mouse Hunt and I always enjoyed his role there. But Only also, Murders was a nice cameo there. Yeah, I th I thought he's fine in Only Murders. You know, he seems like he's in like that B tier compared to like a Steve Martin. He's in the same tier as like Martin Short. Like him and Martin Short are the same type of like level of actor, in my opinion. You know, I don't know if that's a diss to one or the other, but like that's that's how I view them. So um yeah, it, I think it's great because Joaquin is going to be pretty much in every frame of this movie, and that's the way we like it. It's like uh, him just, you know, with these amazing landscapes, getting lost in a role, probably p playing multiple characters like we saw in the poster. Feed me this movie. This movie is going to be – I think if we saw this trailer before we drafted the most anticipated of 2023, this makes the list, honestly. Yeah, definitely. I think – my last, my last thing on this, a part of this reaction is, someone that's in this movie wasn't in the trailer. At least I missed him, and that's Michael Gandolfini. Didn't see him in the trailer. He's you one know, of the first names on the billing, and he doesn't have okay. on IMDb. He doesn't have like a character name next to his name, so it's interesting. Like it's like it's kept under wraps who he is. I don't know why. I don't know if it's a mistake. IMDb is not caught up, but he's not in this trailer, and he's not on IMDb. He, he's on IMDb, but not his the person he's playing. So just wanted to throw that out there. That's just another thing I noticed. I wonder if he's gonna. Man, he kind of looks like his kid. <laughs> like, like, no, like he, I, th I thought like he was gonna be a younger Joaquin. I think that was my prediction. Yeah, but I'm just looking at they the showed the young. They showed right now, but they didn't like. He's not on the poster. Michael Gandolfini, and they show four different versions of Joaquin, and one of them's obviously not Joaquin. It's a younger kid. Don't know his name, but they don't have Michael Gandolfini on the poster, so they're like, oh, are we going to get a fifth Joaquin uh, bow here in this movie that's supposed to be like the big twist, and that's Michael Gandolfini? I'm, not, I'm just throwing something out there. 
it's interesting to me. Well, because, oh, just I wanted before I to continue Michael Gandolfini, Stephen McKinley, the dude guy from Dune with the weird eyes. Like he seems like he just has a niche for these like horror type of movies. Like it just seems like he's made for that type of thing. He just has that vibe where he's like the calm, cool, collected, like um actor that's set in these movies. But Michael Gandolfini, you know what? I just keep I keep staring at his face right now. And you know, I'm thinking of Cooper Hoffman every single time I see him, and it's weird because like, uh. James Gandolfini, son, Michael Gandolfini, right, plays, right, goes to the Sopranos, like, plays many scenes in Newark, plays Tony Soprano, younger version. And then Cooper Hoffman basically has, uh, continues a relationship that Philip Seymour Hoffman had with PTA in Licorice Pizza. For some reason, I think they could just play each other's roles. I think they could just, they are just constantly going into roles, competing with one another. Like, I bet Cooper Hoffman was up for the same part as Michael Gandolfini here. <laughs> like, I just, ri- I just imagine it. A future rivalry in Hollywood. Michael yeah, Gandolfini versus Cooper Hoffman. Random thought, but I guess that's like the point of the podcast. Um, Yeah, it's going to be cool. And I- I'm very excited to see where he lands in the story. Maybe he's like this, a fictional version of himself, a younger version of himself within one of these like really elaborate landscapes that are set from Ari Aster here. Did Ari Aster write this too? Did he write yes. this? Yeah, and he wrote and Midsommar and he wrote Hereditary. Yeah, he's an animal. This dude is going for it. And I think he's looking for some like recognition now, like you said, going for it. This is an ambitious film. That's that, that 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 if I Clearly. use one word, one adjective to describe it, it's ambitious. Cannot wait for it. Any other final thoughts? Yeah, I think ambitious and it's just it seems like an A twenty four movie where it's like this is a simple story. A guy's afraid to go see his mother, but they turn it into something wacky and big. Everything ever, everywhere all at once. It's like a mother daughter relationship, family falling apart, but like it's just multi dimensional. You're getting wacky and just like literally all over the universe and timelines. But it's all about that simple plot. This is just another one of those things. And just I think it fits so well uh, with A24 and Ari Aster. It's like psycho horror thriller adventure. You know, that's like what this is. It's Nailed wild. It. And I, I cannot wait to see it. <laughs> some some Hoover and Roger Rabbit vibes. <laughs> like some of those parts <laughs> of the trailer. That's a good way to end it.